What's up guys, Dr. Houlihan here again with another Barefoot Shoe Review. Today, I've done something wild and I've done something crazy. I ventured into territory I never thought I would venture to. Today, I'm reviewing a pair of Crocs. The pair that I'm going to be reviewing with you guys today is the Venture Pack 2. Let me start by saying that myself, as well as the entire world, just a decade ago was on the other side of the Crocs fence. It was a joke. Everyone who bought them was like, oh, haha, -ha, this person's wearing Crocs. And then everyone wanted to be part of the joke, so everyone got Crocs. And then evidently, the consensus seems to be that they're actually kind of comfortable. That being said, I never thought I would purchase a pair of Crocs in my life. Up until just yesterday, I was also on the other side of the Crocs fence. But I walked into the store, and I saw these, and they were so cool. And I could not help myself. I had to get a pair of these, no matter what brand they were. So, let's talk about the toe box. Uh, it's pretty commonly known that Crocs does actually have an acceptably wide toe box. This is usually the number one criteria for me when I'm picking my shoes out. And so I happen to be wearing my correct toes at the store. You'll never catch me without them. And I tried them on with the correct toes in and there's plenty of room for my toes inside. So the toe box is good. Now, as far as the ground feel and the flexibility of the shoe, it's not great. It bends a little bit. It might twist a little bit, but this is not going to really give you that much of a minimal feel to the shoe. Those of you who are used to wearing more minimal shoes that flex and bend in any and every direction and allow your foot to do what it needs to do, this shoe is not going to give you a similar experience. This shoe is going to be more of a transitional shoe for people who are ready to start experiencing some of what the barefoot world has to offer, like the wide toe box, but is not yet ready to jump in to a 5mm outsole. In terms of the sizing with Crocs, I was a little bit disappointed because they don't do half sizes, which is unfortunate. Um, so I had to choose between a 10 or 11. I ended up going with the 10 just because it is an open back on the shoe. You got the little strap to hold your heel in place, but I felt like I was swimming in the 11 and if I tried to move any faster than a casual walk that I would have came right out of the shoes. So I, I went with a little bit more snug fit. I still had plenty of room for my toes at the end. So again, no half sizes on the Crocs, unfortunately. As far as the price goes on these Crocs, I don't know what most Crocs cost. Again, I've never purchased a pair. These ones were $70 retail, which considering how cool they are, I don't think that's that bad of a price. Um, the style actually reminds me some of like the, uh, the off-white collaborations that they, that they do with Virgil. A lot of brands have done collaborations with off-white and this kind of is reminiscent of that, but it's not going to cost you $500 for a pair of sneakers. In terms of the durability, I haven't had them for very long, um, but I did some research and most people are saying that the Crocs are pretty durable. They said it's not rubber, it's not plastic, it's this material called uh, Cross Light, I think it is. And so people are saying that it holds up pretty well to the test of time. I mean, I wouldn't try to run in them or anything like that, but if you're someone who just wears them at work and you just walk, uh, seems like not that bad of an option. It seems like they might hold up for a couple years for you. One of the unique features I like about this shoe Probably the only unique feature I like about this shoe is the design. I just thought that this was one of the coolest designs I've ever seen on a shoe. I wish that the barefoot community would come up with something this cool, but, and you know, I don't even know who this collaboration is done with or if it's a collaboration at all, but it's got the zipper pocket on the front, the zipper pockets emerging from another zipper pocket. It's got these little, I don't know, carabiner-like attachments. It's got the yellow and gray on the back strap. The color scheme is just so cool. I don't know. I just thought that this is such a cool looking shoe. I had to get a pair. Drawbacks of the shoe. So I talked a little bit about the flexibility earlier. It's not a very flexible shoe. It's not gonna really give you that barefoot experience in terms of allowing your joints to move how they should move. I would not recommend staying in these shoes all day, every day as your exclusive choice of footwear. Uh, obviously get barefoot if you can, but get barefoot shoes as well if you can and kind of rotate them in the mix if you're going to be wearing these. Um, another one of the drawbacks is they do have a heel drop. I think it's about 8 millimeters from the heel to the toe, uh, which is not tremendous, but it's not great either. Zero drop is always better in terms of your foot health uh, for many reasons. The other drawback about this shoe is that I am a hypocrite. I have been chuckling to myself about people wearing Crocs for years and years now. I don't know how it became a mainstream trend, but it did. I was on the other side of the fence. I was not in agreement, and I, I, I now bought a pair. So, drawback of the shoe, I'm a hypocrite. I'm on the other side of the fence now. Feel free to ridicule me as well. All things being considered, keeping in mind the drawbacks, uh, as a shoe, I don't think it functions particularly well, but as a fashion item, I think it thrives. 
and in fact it excels. So overall, I'm going to rate these Crocs an 8 out of 10. Okay guys, that's my review of the Crocs Venture Pack 2. I hope that you guys found this information helpful. I hope that you don't cancel me for being a hypocrite. And as always, I'll have more videos coming soon.